Hey everyone, welcome to my studio. It's Karen Margulis and I'm here with this week's demonstration. Heidi is, if I don't watch out, she's going to trip me up, so i got to be careful. She decided she wants to hang out here today. We've been working this week uh, in our on the Patreon page on Notan, or creating thumbnails that are just using two values, black and white. And what I did was I made my reference photo into uh, black and white so that I only can see the big simple shapes and that really helped me make my my no tan and I started off with this no tan uh, was this one and I didn't like it it's not very interesting it's kind of evenly division of space between the black and the white so luckily I did it on an index card so it doesn't cost me very much to do another one and I much rather play with no tan in the early stages on index cards than on my painting so I just I raised the horizon so that I would have more of the dark shape uh, present and so I find that this is a lot more interesting so I'm going to use this one for the painting now here's the fun part let's take our note pans and use the note tan for our underpainting or our block in and I'm actually going to do a wet underpainting today so let me just turn around and put my information up here I'll put my note tan up here and I'm going to put my photo up here I don't this is the one that I don't want now, I'm going to do a wet underpainting using black and white. Um, so, <clears throat> I have a piece of white sanded paper. It was uh, Art Spectrum Color Fix sanded paper. And I'm using a Derwent, Derwent, I'm sorry, Derwent Intense block is what they're called. And they are just sticks of pigment like this. And when you, you can use them wet or dry, but when you wet them, they just explode with color. But I'm using black, so it's not all that exciting. I'm using some rubbing alcohol, regular rubbing alcohol, 70%, and a stiff brush. And I'm going to use it to liquefy the Derwent. And I don't mind if it drips. In fact, I love drips. That's the wonderful thing about wet underpainting. And we're going to be talking a lot more about underpaintings in the coming months. So this is just kind of a, a quick tease on the beauty of a wet underpainting. But I'm going to just wet it with the rubbing alcohol, like so. And one, just one quick tip about any time you do a wet underpainting. You are not a house painter, you're an artist. So what you're going to want to do is when you have the brush in your hand, is to take your time and to actually paint with it. Don't just wet it from top to bottom, but really take advantage of the, the uh, ability that you have with a, a paintbrush to create an interesting underpainting. And that includes letting things drip. So look at how fun that is. Look how it looks like a storm. A lot of times that's what the beauty of wet underpainting is, it kind of leads you in a different direction perhaps. So normally you have to wait for these underpaintings to dry, but I went ahead and I did one already, so we have one that's dry and we're ready to paint. Now, normally if you've been following my demos, you know that I always pick my pastel palette in advance. This time I'm just going to use this set, it's Terry Ludwig's um, Richard McKinley plein air selection uh, landscape and I love this set it really allows me to paint just about anything um, and I really enjoy the, the kind of gray down colors with a few of the brighter colors but the grays are really important and this set is really nice so it's going to be a challenge for me to just use one set but it's a lot of fun to do so just to make sure that I knew that I would be able to do something with this set, I did a quick color study. Can you see that? Okay. I just took an index card and I just made color notes. I call this a color note card. Where all I did was I just put the colors that I think I'm going to use in the painting and very roughly put it in order that I want to uh, apply it. And that gives me... an. Uh, an idea that, yeah, you know what, these colors in this set will work just fine. So the first thing I'm going to do is go in and reinforce the dark areas. So wherever I see dark, I'm going to go ahead and reinforce the dark. And I'm using right now a dark value blue. And you're going to find that when you put color on top of the black, it's, 
it's a little bit different than when you're painting on white or light colored paper. It's kind of fun to discover uh, what happens. That's one color, one, one uh, value. And then I usually like to do more than one value of dark. Let's see what this one is. This is a dark burgundy. And so I'm just applying the dark burgundy. And I don't know if you're noticing, but the strokes that I make in the foreground are more up and down, kind of the way that grasses in a marsh would grow. And by the way, I meant to uh, say that whenever I start a painting, the first thing I do is ask myself, why? Why am I painting this scene? What is the concept? What do I hope to get across to my viewers? And uh, the one thing that I really enjoyed about this particular photo is I really like the, um, the feeling of the grasses growing up in the water, growing up out of the water, so I'm calling this one high tide. So like the, the creek has kind of flooded in, it's high tide, and I'm going to create the illusion of some of these grasses sticking up. All right, so that was two layers of dark, and now I'm going to go and add a third layer, and I'm going to add a dark green this time, because my marsh, my marsh grasses are green. So now it's time to put in some of that green, and I'm just kind of skipping that in places around the dark. So then the next thing that I normally do in a painting is approach the sky or the lights. And, bef and that's what I'll do, and the, um, the reason why is I like to establish the type of mood or the quality of the day before I move on to anything else. And before I do that, I want to establish where, that, where the land mass is. So I'm using kind of a, uh, some uh, gray down blue violets to kind of create the feeling of that land mass. And then I'll know just how far down I'm going to bring the sky. So this painting is about the high tide. Not really about the sky, but I want to put marks on the sky that help direct the viewer's eye down in towards the marsh. And, I, and I'll just, it's kind of a uh, moody, overcast day. So I'm going to just use a variety of cooler colors in the sky. So I've got a blue, I've got a lavender. Let's put in a, well, a little bit lighter value than that other lavender. Um, as it goes down to the horizon, it's going to get a bit lighter, so I'll add this lighter pink. And then finally, when it comes down to the horizon, hmm, where did that color go? Here we go. It gets a little bit warmer, so I'm sticking with the pink family, and I'm using a lighter, warmer pink down at the horizon. And I kind of like the idea that the sky is starting to turn blue, like there's, there's kind of hope. A little bit of uh, breaks in the cloud cover, so I'm adding some blue, a nice warm turquoise blue to the sky. Just kind of to, to, to uh, simulate that break, the breaks in the, in the sky. Now I'm going to go ahead and add just a little bit of a very, very pale, um, it's really a pale yellow right at the horizon there. So that's it with the sky. So now I'm ready to move down into the, the grasses and the water. I'm going to first apply what I like to call the dirt color. So I'm going to put some color on the, um, the ground where the grass is going to grow. And I think what I'm going to do is just kind of reintroduce those violets that I put up in the sky. And there's a couple reasons for this. First reason is it's going to make the uh, ground or the grass much more interesting um, because I'll, it'll be some colors in the, in the, what I like to call the dirt colors. But beyond that, it's going to create a connection between what's happening in the sky and what's happening on the ground. So by adding the pinks and the violets in the grasses, in the dirt, I call this the dirt, then it allows there to be this nice relationship uh, between the two color families. 
All right, so now I've got sky, I've got dirt, I've got distant land. Actually, while I'm thinking of it, I'm going to take my pale pink, which was the sky color, and I'm going to break up this distant piece of land and make it a little bit more interesting. It was, it was kind of uh, straight and boring. So I kind of want to dig into it with the sky color to break it up and make a more interesting silhouette against the sky. All right, now I'm going to... Um, let's see, what should I do next? I want to do the water, but before I do that, I need to get some reflections going in the, in the grass. So before I, I attempt the water, I'm actually going to need to go in and do some of the grass. So I start at the back. I like to start in the, the distant grass and paint that and move my way forward. And this helps remind me that I need to create this kind of illusion of depth. So what I'm doing is I'm using some of the cooler, duller greens that are in this set. So I've got two what I would call dull greens in their light. And I'm using horizontal strokes to kind of create this feeling of uh, looking at the tops of the grasses in the distance. Because we would not be able to see that far back, we wouldn't be able to see individual blades of grass. So I'm just kind of hinting at the, the tops of the grass, how we would maybe see those grasses in the distance. As I come forward, I'm going to change not only the color green that I use, but I'm going to change the direction of my marks so that they go more in an in a up and down fashion. And this is because as we come closer, we can see the grasses and how they grow. So I'm going to start off with a darker, cooler green. And I really would like to allow some of the pink to peek through. So I'm not trying to get rid of all the pink. And I just put, I'm putting in a darker green in these shadowed areas uh, along the, the uh, edge of the water. Um, and now I'm going to use a brighter or warmer green in these foreground grasses here. But I can't, I need another green for the distance. There was one thing that I really liked about this particular uh, image, even though it was in black and white, is that I could tell that there was some brightness at the horizon. Uh, some of the grasses were catching that last bit of light. So I'm using a much more intense yellow green for the distance just to kind of hit at this idea that there's sunlight hitting some of those grasses back there. And not as much in the foreground. Now I'm ready to do the water, but before I do that I want to create some uh, reflections. So this is one of the rare occasions where I actually use my finger and I'm taking my my pinky finger and I'm pulling down the grasses into the where the water is going to be and this is the start of my reflections and then the next part of doing reflections is I'm going to put in the actual water and there's something that I need to address here I don't have an indication of where the, the bank is in the distance so I, I kind of have to reintroduce some of the bank area and now I'm going to take those same colors that I put in the sky and I'm going to kind of flip the sky over to determine the order that I'll paint the colors. So what is at the horizon will actually be in the, the um, water that's furthest away. So I'll use that pale pink in, this, in these uh, areas that are further back. What other colors are up in the sky? We've got a little bit of a more intense pink, so I'll throw that in. We also have some of those violets, so I'm going to throw some of that in. Now as I come down here to where the where there's going to be some reflections, I'm using a little bit of a lighter touch because I don't want to cover um, all of the grasses up. There was also some blue in the water, or in the sky, sorry. So I'm going to add some blue. Now here's where it gets tricky because I want this feeling of the grasses uh, sticking out of the water on low tide. So I just have to kind of uh, move the water, put the water in very lightly, and then I'm going to reintroduce some of those reeds. Now, a good way to show where the water hits the bank is to take the tip of your pastel and just create some very fine lines 
What? High tide. My assistant is reminding me that I want it to be high tide. That's correct. So I, I'm putting in water, but then I'm going to reintroduce those reeds. So it's always good. Thank you for the reminder. It's always good to remind yourself of what your concept is. Because you can get so caught up in painting that you forget what you really wanted to say about the painting. All right, so now I'm, I've, got, I've got the sky, I've got the land and the dirt, I've got some grass, I've got some water. So this is the fun part. It's just simply coming in and putting in those finishing marks and kind of just refining. And how do I know what, how to refine? I just simply ask myself, what was my concept? Is, that, is it clear? And how does the viewer read this painting? In other words, how does the viewer enter and exit? Well, you can kind of come down through these clouds, and then once you get here, you kind of pick up here, and you go down the water. So I just need a little bit more clarity in some of these um, grasses. So I'm going to take the side of this. Now, because I don't have my grass box, and normally I, I kind of make the grass with the harder pastels. In this case, I only have the Terry Ludwig uh, softer pastels, so I'm using the edge of it and pressing it and releasing it to create some grassy marks. And that's how I'm going to make do with this set. And then finally, I'll come in and say, okay, I could use a few brighter pieces of grass right in here, and then maybe a little touch of... Um, a little bit of what, what I here's what I'm thinking. I'm trying to think and and uh, make this and talk and think at the same time. It's not always easy to do. What I want to do is I want to um, make this feel like it's further back. And right now they're both about the same value. So I could lighten this, but I could also darken this one. So what I'm going to do is take that Terry Ludwig eggplant that's in this set. You can see how dark it is, and I'm going to add a few bits and pieces of it in the foreground area, and of course I can use it for some of these bits and pieces of grass that were coming up out of the water. So it's actually the perfect color and value to create that feeling of high tide that I'm after. And then finally, I think when you get down to the edge of the path, is there anything really for you to see? And there's not so much, so I think I'm going to put in just a little bit of a hint of a building back there. So I'm going to just make a couple of marks with the pastel and add a little pink roof. And I'm going to call this one done. So Heidi's done, and I'm done, and, and thanks for tuning in today.